What's up, numbers? Welcome back to another episode of Hyper Heroes here in Hyper Rabbit Power Go! This is probably the most DC-centric episode we've done in a very, very, very long time because, as many people like to point out, we talk a lot about Marvel. Well, yeah. now's an opportunity to talk about something else. Here you go. And <laughs> there we have it is. a very, 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 very special guest. Uh, it is my fault that we have not had this person on uh, before because he's been <laughs> wanting to be on our show for a while. Yeah. He watches. He's asked me. I, I'm he's outside Zach. the window with a sign. <laughs> yeah. I'm like Charlie in the Chocolate uh, Factory. Uh, like, one you, guys, you guys can't see it. There's a giant window on <laughs> yeah, the side. Right. And Andre, every week, has been right out there just rubbing uh, the glass, saying, hey, guys. You know him. You love him. Andre Meadows is here. Hey, Thank you so much for up? being here. Andre from Black Nerd Comedy. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. Of course. On this Super very special episode. Yeah, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm just going to say it's a very special episode. It oh, is because you're it here. Is. It is. Andre, that's why. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure guests will be like, I'm sure guests will be like, oh, it's a very special episode because Hector's not here. <laughs> oh, no. Hector's no, in Qatar. Like Hector's in Qatar. Hector's, in Qatar Hector's having Hector's a doing good time. his thing. Yeah, yeah he's doing I, his thing. He's doing his thing. Respect. But so excited to have you here. We were just talking about how, like, we we are... Well, I'm trying. You're doing. You're actively doing. Adjusting our life to an East Coast schedule because of all the trailers and news that comes out. Central at the most. <laughs> Give me Central Mountain Time. I'm, a, I'm not that East just yet. But yeah, like this, these past few weeks because you know you, go, you got the, the Frozen's, the yeah. Frozen's yeah. coming the Frozen, out. Yeah. So you got to get those yeah. family films out there. And then you got the yeah. Star Wars coming out. So right. like there's just been this trailer onslaught for yeah. the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's like I was saying that it's a friend of mine who's just literally been. Uh, Texting me every morning. I've called them my wake up call now. <laughs> They're just like every morning, like seven. Ding. Scooby Doo trailers out. Oh, yep. okay. Yep. Ding. Sonic trailers out. Okay. Yep. Yep. Ding. Cat trailers out. Yep. I'm like, yep. all right, let's go. Let's oh, go. Let's go. Cats. cats. Oh, man. Sweet Jesus. Hey, don't, cats. don't hate oh. on cats. I'm ready for cats. Oh, sweet Jesus. While y'all in there with Rising <laughs> with Skywalkers, I will oh. be getting my cats going on. All right. By the way, yeah. congrats on being trending. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Dude, that's dope. <laughs> yes, thank that's you. A, that's a big accomplishment. Thanks Good job. so much. Good job, Thanks man. so much. I hope all the people that had the music in the trailer appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's. So I, I helped a lot of bands this year. I helped Coolio, <laughs> helped Gangsta's Paradise with the first trailer. You need some residuals, and I, man. And I helped, you know, right? uh, helped Supersonic in the, on that's the next right. one. That's, that's right. right. Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> Copyright claim <laughs> process. It works great. Oh, my God. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's, something, that's something that's never, never going to go away, and we deal with it all the time, and it's <laughs> the worst. Yes. By the way, we're talking about shows for over the age of 13 on this. Just that's right. That out there that's too. right. Just oh let, me, let me get everything out there on yeah, the yeah, right. know, yeah, no, 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 no music, 13 over, and no swearing, maybe. That's a YouTube professional right there, yeah. everybody. <laughs> I that's got not us. Professional. Every time hey, now, uh, Boot for, camp. Boot for camp. a lot of our videos, I have to go in and I edit in <laughs> clips of uh, Iron Man and uh, Captain America saying language, oh, language. Yep. And I'm I, like, might, oh. I, might slip a, I might slip a couple of Let them fly, homie. Let them fly. It's okay. Just let them fly. But yeah, it's been crazy. And like, you know, at least for my social media, I try to go out there and I try to talk about trailers that are not just related to superheroes or Star Wars. I yeah. try to do as much as I can about things that I'm passionate about. Yeah. And yeah. it is hard because at 5.30, I'll see notifications. I'm like, I want just an hour more mm -hmm. of sleep, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, man, Scoob so got me hyped. I, I, I know, know that's a weird thing to say, but Scoob, no, man. Scoob got me hyped, man, because I got some, man, I got some, I did some deep diving. <laughs> I did some, like, investigating. Yeah. yeah and, man, I you know, there's a new universe coming. <laughs> that's, all I, that's what I'm feeling. That's what yeah. I'm feeling. Okay. Right. okay. I'm Marvel, excited. I'm Marvel excited. and DC are cool, but, yeah. uh, you know. Well, Scooby Doo. I grew up on them Laugh Olympics. I grew up on them, them uh, Yogi's Ark. Okay. You know, okay. so I'm ready for that universe to return to. Oh, my all God. Right. All it's right. going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> anyway. Also, you're here. You're going to be doing this episode with us, but you're also going to be doing The Mandalorian Chapter yes. 3, The Sin. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Uh, Zach's also going to be joining us for that. That's going to be available awesome. on our Patreon early. Mm -hmm. So if you want to check that out, jump over to Patreon, patreon.com slash hyperrpg. We're doing episodes of The Mandalorian. We're also going to be doing an episode of Titan. Zach Titan. will be joining us for that. God help us. Uh, that's going to be a very interesting <laughs> conversation. Zach, oh, Zach has been loving that more show. More thoughts. Okay, okay. Ho, ho. I, more uh, thoughts. I have, I, have not, I have not tightened. Mm -hmm. So in one word... Uh, one that's word. it. There you go. One word. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like you got it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What's it? I'm going to use the word garbage. Really? Uh, but I heard... I See, thought it was... Too. Oh, season two. Season two. Well, oh, okay. It's it, it's frustrating because it started on a high note. Yeah. Yeah. And there were a couple of episodes that I really liked, and then really quickly it started to go downhill. Okay. And it's so disappointing because you're giving away the good stuff. Oh, yeah, know, yeah. Save it for I the podcast. I know. I know. Good I know, stuff. I know. Look, we'll do a separate podcast going explain Titans to me. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> explain to a person who haven't seen Titans <laughs> what happened right, and, right, and yeah. why you feel these ways. Yeah. Exactly. So if you guys want to check all that stuff out, jump for the Patreon. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, I'm going to be changing up the the way we re release some of that stuff. So I'm doing also a lot of polls, mm -hmm. trying to get you guys' feedback on what you think about the shows, Mandalorian, Titans, also other stuff that we're watching. Uh, I want to start doing a lot more 
I want to get a lot more engagement, a lot more uh, feedback from you guys about some of the stuff that you're watching, what you're excited for. So check that out. And next week, next week is the finale of Titans, but right. it's Thanksgiving break. Right. So we're going to kind of figure out how we can do that. Yeah, I don't know. Some of us are going to be out of town. Oh. Um, so we got to kind of figure that out. I have right, ideas, right, right. but, you know, we'll let you guys know. Well, yeah, we'll talk about we'll it. Talk about yeah. it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. But... Should we just get into Let's uh, get into let's it. Get it. Let's get, let's into, get it. into this. So the first thing we're going to talk about that I'm, uh, I think, uh, you know, I'm excited for the Batman movie. Uh -huh, I think a yeah. lot of people are excited for the Batman movie. Yeah. Matt Reeves, who's the director, has been announcing some amazing casting. Yeah, what have we got? So we got, so we got, got Pattinson, of course. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. so then, because uh, there, there, was, there was some that are like legit and there was all those rumor ones. Yeah, so all the ones that are confirmed are Robert Pattinson as Batman. Yes. Zoe Kravitz, Kravitz. as Catwoman. Yes. Um, did um, the Riddler get cast? Yeah, the Riddler. It's uh, Paul Dano. Paul right. Dano. That's right. right. Paul, Paul Dano, Dano is Edward Edward Nashton. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon. Gordon. Yes. And then there was someone who was cast, but they didn't say who it was. Well, they've been talking about. There was one. Yeah, there was one actor. Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? There was someone who was like rumored. Yeah. And but it hasn't been confirmed yet. Uh, Andy Serkis is Alfred. Right. Yes. And okay. then that now, is legit. Okay. That yeah. is legit. And yeah. then the newest yeah. casting is. John Turturro wow. as Carmine Falcone, Dang. which is a character we haven't seen since the Dark Knight trilogy. Right. He had, yeah. he had right. a prominent role in, the Batman, in Batman Begins, yeah. and then sort of the fallout of that movie, we got to explore um, through the Dark Knight, not so much in the right. Dark Knight Rises, but mostly in right. the Dark Knight. Yeah. Um, I am very excited for this casting because as much as I love Tom Wilkinson, Tom Wilkinson is very British, very much not Italian-American, mm -hmm. and John Turturro is... So I'm is he Italian American? He's Italian American. So I thought I'm, he was Latino. I thought he was. Like I thought so too. And then I looked it up. And I'm like, oh, he's Italian American. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. he did a good job. Whoever, whatever ethnicity he played in, the Big Daddy was that guy. I'm very sneaky. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm very sneaky. It could have like, been Italian indis American, but it's New York. Latino. It's, yeah, I would I change the socks. <laughs> I'm very sneaky. So, so uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, so I'm excited to see this character again, and it really seems like. Just kind of what we've heard about the the movie and what comics it's kind of pulling from, Long Halloween. It seems like it's going to be very mobster centric, and it's also going to revolve around of the bigger DC villains. Right. Uh, yeah. We've heard rumblings of things like the Penguin. Right. We obviously know Catwoman, Edward Nashton, which will right. probably end up, you know, we'll see the Riddler. And I've heard also rumblings of other other characters. Right. Do you think it's going to be a thing where it's is it going to be like a Gotham esque type thing where it'll be like. You'll see some of these characters. Some of them might be full blown as mm -hmm. their villain side, or some might just be. Well, it's the character right now, but they might be leading up to something in the future movie. I think. I think that's very much a possibility, especially when Matt Reeves tweets out Edward Nashton and he doesn't right. say the Riddler. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So I think that's. A, I think that's a very high possibility and probability, and I think it's kind of a really great way to. Come in and do a Batman movie and not have to worry about setting up every single character's yeah, origin. Yeah, I think right. that's kind of seen right. that. Yeah, I think that would be a neat idea to be like establishing the world and these characters are already in that yeah. world, so Absolutely. that way you don't know w at what point right. will like like what Edward Nashton is example. Right. If you just set him up as that character, you don't know right. is he going to become the Riddler in this movie? Right. Yeah. Is he just now in that world so that the next movie right. he becomes a Riddler? Like it, it can be for some great surprises yeah. of right, not right. knowing which villain goes full on or which ones team up at which time and right, right, right. Or, exactly. you know exactly. if you want to do that whole Catwoman thing of like will she be nice will she not be like, right. that is, yeah. I, I think that's a cool idea yeah I really like that idea a lot and you know mo more recently in the comic books Catwoman has been more of an ally to Batman yeah. Yeah. and not so much an enemy and we've never really got to explore that we explored on Gotham quite a bit but cinematically that's never really been the case the Dark Knight Rises I think is the closest thing that's sort of like made the commitment of like Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne are allies. Right. Um, but I would love to see a little bit of dealing with the past of what those characters are being, right. you know, adversaries and talk. They would probably in this movie probably discuss that. Yeah. And then in, you know, in the next movie, we definitely have more of a solidified sort of like ally relationship. And you mean with Batman and, and Catwoman. And Ca oh, and Catwoman. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. yeah I, that, that would make sense to me. I'm just kind of I'm borderline kind of on this just because we have seen other movies that have too many villains in it. Sure. And yeah. we're just like, dude, that was you should have taken away Sandman and Venom and just focused on but Green Goblin or yeah. like you right. know. But see, that's what I'm saying. With those, it was like it was very established. That right. You're you're Sandman the villain because that's that's been the super hero movie way to do yeah, things. Yeah, is yeah. Like the the big draw is like who's that new villain this yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. If this is an idea of like maybe it's just setting up that these characters in this world yes. right. so that everyone has to go full villain at a specific time. Like like with Spider Man three but yeah. if if what if 
you know, Eddie Brock never became Venom to like the exactly. very, very, right. very, right. very right. end yeah, yeah, yeah. T to like the next time. Yeah. Right. Then right. it'd be like, okay, it makes sense why you established him now right. Right. to then do it for the next one. But or, that didn't happen. Or <laughs> you could do kind of Arkham, the Arkham video game style. Yeah. Where they're just there. Yeah. And they're already a super villain team and they're ready to take down Batman no matter what. And I'd be down yeah. with that too. Like, I'd just, be down with that. We Some of these characters, I mean, they're, they're, there's different ones they're doing right now, but like right. a lot of them are iconic. So it could mm-hmm. be one of those things of like they're just already they're yeah, already there. They're already here. And going back to John Turturro, yeah, I'm glad that he's got cast because he's done. He's a great actor. He's done a lot of work. Yes. But every time his name comes up, I just think about Bumblebee peeing on him <laughs> and uh, about uh, <laughs> about him being underneath Devastator's scrotum. <laughs> so it's gonna be nice. <laughs> I feel you there, man. I and I know he's done, he's done oh, other stuff man. even since then, but that's like, just the first thing that comes to my mind. So I'm, I'm excited to be like, yeah, now yeah. he's going to be a crime boss. Yeah. He's going to be a badass. Yeah. I'm like, all right, yeah. Let's go back to that. Yeah. For sure. And I think a lot of people. Dark, who, scary. Yeah, yeah and I think a lot of people who, who are coming from Transformers, <laughs> because we, we know this. I mean, I, especially like whenever I talk about, whenever I see people's like hot takes on superhero movies right. and how like either terrible they are or how incredible they are, I'm like, you do realize that there's a whole other world of cinema out there that exists where there's actually like yeah. great movies. Yeah. And a lot of these actors who you think are like terrible right. are actually like really yeah. good in movies right. that are really good quality. Right. And I feel like, yeah, because most people who are sort of like into the things that like we're mostly into, they might only know John Turturro from Transformers. Exactly. And I'm like, right. no, no, please, no. for the love of God. No. Of you, you think no. there's a bunch of Marvel movies every year. Go back and look at that Transformers run and yeah. look at that box <laughs> office. <laughs> right. Like no. everyone talks that smack, but check the numbers. Yep. Transformers yep. and Ice yep. Age made bank. I oh, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why they made a hundred of them. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm excited for Carmine Falcone because – we got to see a little bit of that criminal underworld in, in Batman Begins, and by the time we got to The Dark Knight, Carmine Falcone was just in Arkham Asylum. Yeah. And in the third movie, it's eight years. It's set eight years after The Dark Knight, so we don't. It the story just completely transitions into something different, which yeah. is totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I for these Matt Reeves movies, and I and I would imagine that someone who's done the Apes movies and there's been such a consistency from movie to movie, mm-hmm. I would imagine that if he's going to set up all these things like. The crime, the the crime families of Gotham City, and all these villains. It's going to be to hopefully have a consistency throughout the whole thing, right. so that like any filmmaker who potentially jumps in after the third movie, if he does a whole trilogy, mm-hmm. they have a lot of things from mine from that he's been now been setting up for years. So you feel like he's that. building a really good foundation for yeah. anybody else to jump off of. This. I yeah. think so. Yeah. I I would agree with that because there's so many people in here, and it's not just like. Oh, we have random actor B as the penguin or right. whatever. Right. It's it's a person that we're gonna know and probably mm-hmm. have a lot of attachment to. So I, I, it it bodes well, but also we haven't seen anybody pull off like a mega villain team movie yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is what I'm hoping it is. Like I have high hopes that this is gonna be that Sinister Six that they promised us a while ago. Yeah, you know? where it's. Badass villains almost taking down Batman and Batman being even more badass and kicking everybody's ass. Yeah. yeah, I know we've talked a lot about, I mean, I've, I've even talked about it myself throughout the years about like, oh, this movie has too many villains in it. But then I remember even when like with the Marvel movies going on, I was like, well, is there a point where there's going to be too many heroes? And I'm still at this point like, no, <laughs> no more, more, right? more. So I feel like, yeah, we are at that point now. Right. Like, well, we got this, every, these franchises have these great rogues gallery. They yeah. have right, these great right, villains. Right. At what point can we see them all together? Because yeah. when you're reading a comic or when you're watching the animated series right. or, or anything like that, like that's always a great moment yeah. of just seeing yeah. like these characters are together. And I get why in the past they've always wanted to keep them separate yeah. mm-hmm. for each movie. Yeah. But I think we're now at that point yeah, to agree. open it up. Or even if something like, hey, we s- established this. Let's make a Catwoman movie now, like a, like right. a good one. Right. And exactly. So now they could just exactly. take yeah. that Catwoman <laughs> with and do that. two basketball scenes, not just one. <laughs> yes, two basketball. <laughs> all <please>. basketball <laughs> cuts. Oh her playing God. basketball. <laughs> it's an and one video of just all Catwoman all basketball cut. Just oh, crossing man. people up. Oh my God. <laughs> there will always be a soft spot in my heart for that Halle Berry Catwoman. Oh I, man. I will not. I will not. I will not. I was wrong to speak bad of it because there's always be a special place. Ugh. But I think you're absolutely. <laughs> they're they're they're, they're hanging right. out while while uh while Daredevil and Electra fight. Yes. You're on the other side of the playground. (laughs) (laughs) It's divided by Marvel and DC, and they're on their respective sides. But I think you're totally right, though. I think if we can get to the point where where, where Avengers Endgame has like 20-something heroes, and obviously not all of them were main characters, but... But Infinity War did a great job of like going from like character to character to character. Oh, yeah. I think there absolutely is an opportunity, especially because Batman has... I think Batman and Spider Man are like neck and neck for the greatest rogues gallery. Yes. Yeah. And I think because those those villains are so rich and they have so 
much right, to right, right. offer this universe. Yeah. I think it would be an amazing opportunity to do what you're saying and and introduce all of them. And I don't think all of them need to play central roles. Right. Right. I right, think right. you can sort of like how they do in Endgame and Infinity War. You have Ebony Ma. You have you know Corvus Glaive. Mm-hmm. You have mm-hmm. Proxima Midnight. But they're all like they all have their own purpose. Right. And I think they're you all can supporting characters. Exactly. At the end yeah. Of the day. yeah. And I think like characters like Riddler. And Catwoman, I think Catwoman will end up being more central than than some of the other villains. But yeah, I don't think that every single one of them needs to have equal screen time. They all got to have a right, specific right, right, role right, in the right. movie. Like, look at something like Civil War. Like that's that story is yeah. about Tony and, and, and Cap. Yeah. yeah. But it introduced Black Panther mm-hmm. in an amazing way. It introduced Spider Man in an amazing way. So I feel like if you can flip that script and do that same mm-hmm. thing with mm-hmm. villains, mm-hmm. or maybe you know. Is Falcone or someone else the main yes, villain? But right. you can still have these little side things. It's, right. it, we, there's always this thing of like you can't do it. Can't, it can always be done. Of exactly. If it's Absolutely. established right, if it's set up right, yes. it right. can be done. Right, and right. I think Agreed. this could be again one of those ways that DC is, as we're seeing with a lot of other things, is like that can be their yes. their hook. Their way of doing. Yes. You got all these heroes over there. That's cool. We got all these villains over here. Villains Look at over us. Here and on, on top of that, you know, we've done so many iterations of Batman. Yes. I, I think general audiences and fans, obviously. We know who Batman is really, really well yeah. at, at, at this point. Yeah. But I think general audiences, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity to introduce us to their version of the Riddler, right, right, their right. version of Catwoman, <clears throat> Falcone, yeah. the yeah. Penguin, Two Face, Mister yes. Freeze. There's so many. Yeah, I want to yeah. see all those. I want to see all those villains done right, mm-hmm. and I want audiences to connect with, and not necessarily to be empathetic to them, but to just understand who they are and and the yeah. threat they pose exactly. to Batman and why he does what he does basically. Yeah. I read uh, I've been reading a lot of DC comics recently and there's one that came out this week called Von Freeze and it's uh, a little bit of a unique take on Mr. Freeze mm-hmm. where it really explores how Victor Freeze was a child of World War II mm-hmm. and oh. how he sort of gets like um him and his dad have a clashing relationship so he his dad's um best friend they end up working together and because his dad ends up becoming part of the part of the SS this like friendship that he has with this with his uh, partner in the in the chemistry lab or in the lab it kind of falls apart and it sort of changes Victor Freeze's mm. trajectory in life cool. he ends up becoming friends with Thomas Wayne he's there for the birth oh, of Bruce okay. Okay. so there's like a lot of like different so ways you can sort of intertwine to yeah. the origin of rather than just like a random guy who happened to get yes. on Batman's it's a Batman. it's a little it yeah. not it's not completely similar but there's a little yeah. bit of like a magneto backstory to it that you're like oh that can those are ways Ooh. to make the character empathetic like yeah. Nora Freeze ends up being someone that was part of the family that he was kind of adopted into and so like that's oh. how they end up being oh. together so there's like really okay. fun twists and turns nice. that I think you can do with these villains that we've never seen before yeah, yeah. Um, that I think would be really interesting and fun yeah so. I agree yeah. I'm just gonna talk the rest of the episode like, like, oh, it doesn't do it, like Doctor Free or Mister Freeze from the animated <laughs> Let's series. Kick some ice. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the Schwarzenegger one. The one in the animated oh, series yeah. talk very much like this. Oh my god, no, that doesn't work. No, it worked, though. <laughs> but I mean, come on, who doesn't? Lo- I actually was reading that comic oh, book man. as Schwarzenegger. I couldn't right. help myself. <laughs> yeah. like, Wait. The old school Iceman as in the Schwarzenegger voice or uh, the, Mr. Freeze in that comic book. I was reading his character as Mr. Freeze. I was like, this is amazing. This is so uh, good. Laura, please come with me. Come with me if you want to live. Come on. Quickly. Get to the chamber. Ice come to on. See you. Thomas, we gotta deliver the baby. Come on. Quickly before it dies. All right. You got your money's worth. Okay. Uh, we go. killed that one. Let's well, that being said, it. John Turturro, great choice. Yes. Good Can't choice. Really good. Really All good. that to say, great I'm choice. also excited that like every Friday it feels like we get something. I'm like, cool. Thank you for giving us news to talk about on this show. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, when uh, does this movie come out? June uh 25th 2021 okay so oh, wow. I'm just, uh, at this point week. i feel like are we gonna get like a casting announcement every week into the movie <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably for the next probably 18 not. months we're gonna get casting yeah. announcements <laughs> i'm excited though I'm, yeah. i can't wait coffee uh, barista man. number two yeah. will be played by <laughs> Zach <Zach Efron>. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be the best i cannot yes. wait i can't wait but it turns out he's clayface what? i know what? that's a villain that i'm waiting for uh, clayface that's oh, the one man. we gotta yeah, see i would it's love to see that um let's talk a little about superman so yes i I think there's been a lot of um, not misunderstanding, but I think because Henry Cavill is is someone who is not necessarily going out there and saying exactly what the status is of his role as Superman or how right. he feels about the Snyder Cut or right. how he feels about Warner Brothers and this and this. A lot of people have been assuming, well, like, no, he's done. He's done. He's done oh, playing okay. Superman. Yeah. Yeah. And look, whatever's happening behind the scenes, 
it very well could be that he is done playing Superman, at least to the studio. Mm -hmm. But maybe there's also a version of this where Henry Cavill is kind of waiting for the right moment to strike and mm -hmm. to go to Warner Brothers and say, hey, I want to do this. Oh, okay. And maybe it's a Superman movie. Maybe it's a Superman versus Black Adam. Maybe it's a Superman Shazam team up. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. it's another Batman Superman movie. We don't really know. Yeah. Um, but he just did an interview with Men's Health. And there's a couple of things that he says that I think are very, very interesting. The first of which is saying, the cape is still in the closet. It's still mine. I love that. And <laughs> That almost makes <laughs> me nice. choke up. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love that. It's I love so that good. he loves Superman so much. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. And the other thing that you know I think is interesting is we – Comic book fans mostly know him as Superman, and I think a lot of people are going to watch Witcher when it comes out on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I think know him as the guy who cocks his biceps dude, before he kicks somebody's for ass. For us, oh, for me, man. I'm like, I mean, I've known Henry Cavill for a long time, but like his role, Mission Impossible Fallout, <laughs> is so good, and it's that movie is so incredible. Good. <laughs> Every time I see so Christopher McQuarrie uh, announcing a casting thing, it's like Matt Reeves. I'm like, let's go. I'm pumped. <laughs> I'm pumped. Oh, you're gonna put you're gonna put Palm Clementine in this movie. You're gonna put Haley Atwell in this movie. Let's go. I'm in. I'm in. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But Wait, Haley Atwell's gonna be in Mission Impossible. Both of them, seven and eight. Breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, sorry. Dude. I totally oh, derailed. No, 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 no worries. <laughs> I'm so Well, no, we got that guy that we're hearing careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, I, it was, but take it back. Take it, it back. It was interesting. He kind of did like a, a, a more or less a, like a really quick recap of what he thought about the three movies that he's been in. Man of Steel, he says, mm -hmm. a great starting point. If I were to go back, I don't think I'd change anything. <laughs> For me personally, there's a couple of things that I think I, I would personally change. But like, I'm not the direc director or the actor, so great. If you love it, awesome. I'm glad you're happy about that. Yeah. Batman versus Superman. Very much a Batman movie, and I think that Realm of Darkness is great for a Batman movie. I'm going to leave that there. <laughs> uh, Justice League, it didn't work. I think for, for – <laughs> I mean, you know, it, I, Justice League is such an interesting beast. I actually just rewatched our spoiler review of Justice uh -huh, League. Uh -huh. Yeah. And – Obviously acknowledging like everything that kind of went into the beast yeah. that is Justice League yeah. and how it changed hands and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah. For me personally, I really like Henry Cavill as an actor. Um, he talked about how Man of Man from Uncle was the thing that really got him Mission Impossible in The mm -hmm. Witcher. Mm -hmm. And I know there's probably a lot of people who didn't go out and see that movie. I really liked it. Okay. I really liked Man from Uncle. It allowed him to be very charming, mm -hmm. very action oriented, very funny, mm -hmm. and so I think that really showed. And Christopher McQuarrie talks about this. It really showed him how he could, how he hasn't been given the opportunity to stretch a lot of the acting muscles that he he does possess. Well, I was gonna say that, and then also the same thing applies to Superman himself. himself yes, and as, yeah, as far as absolutely. this world, because you set up Man of Steel, and and you know there, there's some things that I feel about that, and I, but I feel like it was definitely a starting point for yeah. what yeah. the Superman yeah, franchise definitely. is going to be, and then just all of a sudden it's like we're gonna throw batman in which, which even that right. i was like okay you right, know right, that makes right. sense it's a good story in itself yeah but then it was like well now we also got to establish the justice league we got to and we right. got to fast track this and i and i'm curious you know the, no matter what you think about those movies yeah positive or negative i'm curious what it would be like if we got a man of steel too like right, the same way exactly. we got the dark knight exactly what if we got <sighs> this the sequel to man yeah. of steel so yeah. we could have been able to further explore what what they were going with, with <clears throat> what the plan maybe was for Superman right, right, right. before this other ex, before the other assets came sure. into it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, so what? I mean, does he ad address that in anything else that he said, Adam? Or no? um, I mean, he talks about sort of like not addressing the Superman thing. So I'll just read the quote that yeah. he talks about okay. in this, yeah. and it and it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of like what his thought is about Superman the character. He says, "I'm not just going to sit quietly quietly in the dark uh, as all this stuff is going on." I've not given up on the role. There's a lot that I have to give for Superman yet. A lot of the story, there's a lot of storytelling to do. A lot of the real true depths to the honesty of the character I want to get into. I want to reflect the comic books. That's important to me. There's a lot of justice to be done for Superman. The status is, you'll see. God, that makes me so <clears throat> happy. That makes my heart <laughs> happy because to me, and honest, this is just my wild speculation, I have a feeling he watches our show. <laughs> if you're out there, what's up, Henry Cavill? I have, he said some stuff online where I'm just like, that sounds really close to what we've said, you guys. Yeah. And, you, you know, whatever. Not saying that he does watch, but I'm just saying. But I love his undying Look, man, devotion. Uh, Margot Robbie has oh, watched Margot our stuff. Margot Robbie has watched our She recognized what? Hector. Yeah, they watched our trailer yeah. for Birds of Prey. She recognized and I'm like, Hector at the I don't think it's outside oh. of the realm of possibility that Henry Cavill no. and other people at DC have right, watched something. Exactly. Oh, nice. but, what, but I love his undying devotion because yeah. we keep talking about, and like I can get choked up sometimes talking about, all the good that that Superman represents, like yeah. everything, he he's the beacon of what we all should strive to be, and Henry Cavill gets that. He yeah. understands and and he knows the heart of Superman. 
uh, it, it and then just seeing his pictures like on his Instagram where he'll use like a Superman doll yeah. and just like <laughs> slowly bringing up. He rides motorcycles. Yep. His helmet has print the comic book prints of Superman all over it. Like yeah. it's not super in your face, but it's just subtle it's Superman yeah. everywhere. He lives and breathes this stuff. And if there's anybody who I entrust with saying something like this and also with the future of Superman, it's it's this man right yeah. here. He embodies it, which yeah. is yeah. makes me so happy to hear all of this that he's saying. Yeah. <sighs> I can't gush enough about that guy. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's been almost 10 years since he's been cast. He was cast, mm-hmm. I think, in like April or June 2010. So it's almost been 10 years that he has like owned the custodianship of this character. Yeah. And there's a part of me then like there's a lot I really like about Man of Steel. Right, yeah. Right, right. But there are definitely elements like what you were saying, Andre. There's elements that were put in sequels that took away from Superman and the pivotal role that he has, not just in the movies, but like in the DC universe. Yeah. Right. Like the whole DC universe was birthed out of the existence of Superman. Right. And I feel like the movies have not necessarily like leaned into that. A, and I get it. Yeah. Like they retconned it. So now Wonder Woman is like the oldest hero. Yeah. yeah. Now with the existence of characters like Shazam and Black Adam, right. and we'll talk about it later, the Justice Society, there's going to be characters that might even like predate, predate Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, well, I guess technically not because she's in I mean, she's a, one. Yeah, she's, so she's technically, she's a god. She's, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. It yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. She doesn't, she doesn't follow this. Yeah, in any yeah. case. But I mean, like my biggest thing has always been like, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are the cornerstones of the DC mm-hmm, universe. Mm-hmm. If those three work, if your other movies are not hits, but they like mostly work, but yeah. Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are still like mm-hmm. thriving, mm-hmm. then you've kind of won in my book. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. if I'm not sold on Superman and I'm not sold on Batman, mm-hmm. but I'm sold on Wonder Woman, great. You, you like, yeah. At least you have one building block done. Right. And like right. Ben Affleck's done. So, like, yeah. The future of the DC films, Batman, who's in this continuity, mm-hmm. is still a question mark. Right. But if Ben a- or if Henry Cavill is hopeful and he's very passionate passionate about right. giving us more when it comes to Superman and the right. arc of the character and what he represents and yeah. he wants to tell more stories, yes, give it to get him. Get him back do it. in there. Yeah. Get him to play Superman again. And coach, put him in, Coach. And putting aside right. like whatever this new Batman uh-huh. is and all that, I mean the way that it's done if we're, if we're going just on the movies made yeah. uh, already i mean you could easily do another story i mean mm-hmm. he's, he's here totally. he, he, he's last seen running with the flash justice league so like if you want to do a a superman you know and of course he had the, the shazam thing right which, which he said he was going to do that yeah he, he yeah. talked about how he wanted to do it but he yeah. couldn't because of a schedule with mission impossible right so right, that's right. why they got to stand so in. so yeah so you you could definitely say if we want to make another standalone Superman movie yeah. you go, go right now. And then it also you, in a weird way through all this, you kind of have an interesting setup of like, yeah. Yeah. he was dead. Yeah. Yeah. He came back, came back pretty hard. Yeah. And then like now is, you know, <laughs> yeah. supposedly all good again. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, how is, how is the world dealing with that? Yeah. You know, yeah. what, 100%. what, you know, what villain was already like Superman's gone. I can do my thing. And now he's back. Oh man. Now, okay. I got to up my right. game. Now, like, yeah. there's, there's so many different ways that you could pr- approach that. Very but I, 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 like I just personally, I would love, I would love to see another Superman movie with him. I agree with someone who loves Superman. Got to be him. together, yeah. and just see w- and just see what the what the concept is. See what yeah. happens when you take everything else out that was there. Right. No, nothing against anything of it, but just right. like just putting right. that aside for a second. Just focus on right. Superman. And just go right, there right, right, because right. yeah, because if we've seen anything about any of the movies after, if you look at Aquaman, yeah, uh, Shazam, Joker, uh, no matter how they were successful they were, how much you think about them. They were able to do their story with as little of a connected, like like Aquaman. It was just like you did that thing with Steppenwolf. That's right. Move it on. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Shazam is like, yeah. here's a reference here, there. Move yeah, it on. Yeah. Joker's like, I ain't with them. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. but they've been able exactly. to tell their story yeah, right, without right. having to do all those connections. Yeah. So I'm curious. I, I think Shazam did it incredibly well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you're referencing so much stuff, and it's yeah. like you're doing it through different characters and like their enthusiasm and the, the, like their hardcore like fandom for those characters yeah. Yeah. without actually having to have them in there. Yes, we have that cameo from Superman, but like to me that's a perfect way to do those sorts of things. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that what you want though? Because yeah. Batman or sorry, Superman is a man of the people. Yeah. You yeah. want to hear those stories coming from them rather than like 
I need to, I don't need to hear it from Superman's mouth every right. time how much people love him. And I know? think also like a character like Shazam, <laughs> without the inspiration of having a Superman in your universe, right. I don't know how well that character kind of w- right. Like, exactly. I don't know. Exactly. I don't know if that hopefulness and inspiration works for a character like Shazam if you don't already have Superman in that universe because that's the, the thing model. that inspires him. Right. He's yeah. the role model. Exactly. For Shazam. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I totally understand. Like Warner Brothers kind of wants to pivot. They want to focus on diverse characters and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I'm 100 percent for that. But I also think that the cornerstones of your universe still have to work mm-hmm. in order for Agreed. general people to kind of buy into it. Yeah, Because yeah. you really got to think about that. It's, it's such a – that time was such an interesting time because, one, you're, you're making Man of Steel mm-hmm. and you just had the success with the Nolan Batman movie. So, of, right. course, so of course, your brain is going to go do the same thing with right, Superman. Right, right, like, that right. just makes sense. <laughs> and then in the process of making that yeah. movie, you get something like Avengers showing up and it's right. like, oh – that's what y'all want now. All right, let's do that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it exactly. was like I, I it, it's one of those, and it seems kind of weird, but it's like I think the timing of it is almost kind of interesting. For like, sure. If, yeah. If, yeah. If, if 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 Man of Steel came out the same time alongside the like, <laughs> Nolan Batman right. movies, yeah. it probably would have had time to grow. If it came out after this cinematic universe, that everyone's trying to mm-hmm. catch it to. I think you wouldn't able to plan this out, but I Definitely. feel like it was this weird movie because like you, when you watch that movie, when you watch yeah. Man of Steel, yeah, yeah, there's a, a Wayne satellite, but no right. one ever watched that movie. At first going, oh, this is starting something. Yeah. Right, no, right. You know, not Iron Man all. literally yeah. ends with Sam Jackson going, we starting something. <laughs> yeah. There is nothing like that in Man of Steel. You're like, this is a good movie. <laughs> they straight up in your I face. I wish you played Nick Fury. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That's literally what it was. <laughs> we starting something. You starting something. You don't believe me just yet, but just hold on. Andre, you need to audition for an alternate <laughs> universe <laughs> version. What if? Of right. Nick oh, Fury. If. For sure. Paper. For I would, I would pay That's for that. Amazing. I would pay but for yeah, that. I just, you know, I just, I, I feel it's a weird thing because I know everyone makes their jokes and I've made jokes as well sure. about DC, but like I, I always have this feeling inside me like, did Man still get a bad rap because just because of when it was timed? I mean, because possible, it, was a weird, yeah. it was a weird, yeah. it was a kind of a superhero movie it transition. It literally came out one year after Avengers and The Dark Knight Rises both yeah. came out. Yeah, yeah. It's so, it, it, you're it's right. Odd you're, place ab- to be. you're absolutely right. Yeah. Just because. The movie landscape at that point was constantly changing. Yeah. Avengers was doing uh, – the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe was doing new things that people didn't know they wanted. Yeah. And specifically with Avengers because like, yes. everyone was all like, oh, Marvel's been killing it. Before they got to Avengers, yeah. they were doing fine. But, right. but they were, doing but they were yeah. yeah, but they weren't doing that well. They were still kind of yeah. seen as standalones. It right. wasn't until that happened and right. that and that sort of you it know, solidified. Yeah, that that, that that theme park ride, if you will. <laughs> 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 some, that, some might say. Some might say <laughs> uh, that <laughs> that that, uh, that 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 was like okay. Well, that's the new thing. Because yeah. like I said, before that, it was looking at something like the Nolan right. movies and going, right. well, that's what you got to do. For sure. Right. So right. I, just, I don't know. I just I, I don't know. No, you're absolutely right. But I wonder if it's like a Weird, yeah, I just wonder what would have happened if that came out a different year. You're I, right. I think, you're absolutely I think, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're 100% right, and I think the Nolan verse and the Marvel Cinematic Universe were like, and I hate saying it because like I like I love both. Yeah. But I think like they were a blessing and a curse for Man of Steel. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Because they made Man of Steel because it was like, oh, it's a Christopher Nolan thing, so we got to make it in the tone of the Dark Knight. Right, right, right. And then Avengers comes out, and it's like. Great. Well, now let's put Batman in there and let's right, build. Right, let's right. build faster. Let's, let's beat yeah. Marvel at it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh no, no, no. Shorter. Wait, breathe, breathe, yeah, yeah, breathe, yeah. breathe. Yeah. Superman, Superman. <laughs> great, you got that. Cool. <laughs> Batman, <laughs> Batman. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Wonder yeah, Woman. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great. Or if you're going to add Batman, like I said, make make that the story. Yeah. Right. You know, because yeah, I think if someone went Batman, don't think Superman is a cool dude. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. like you can, or, or you know, if, that, if that's what you want to go with, mm-hmm. I think that's that's a good, you know, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, though, yeah. Henry Cavill, <laughs> Superman, I'm 100 percent on board for we it. We love I hope you. So. Yeah, I hope we got to. So. I'm just gonna get talk to him like he's staring at us right but now. Do we Henry, love you. Henry. Keep doing, keep doing yes. your thing. But do you wonder if the Batman is going to make that less Harder? possible? Yeah, I don't know. I, I have <sighs> a, a feeling question. he might be not in conversations with the Batman producers, yeah. but in people's ears of like, hey guys, look, like there's an opportunity here to. Maybe do something, not necessarily make it a Batman and Superman movie. Yeah. But m- I'm think I'm imagining that he's thinking of creative ways to tie his yeah. version of Superman into so. this. Yeah. But the I don't know. The That's other big thing too is like you know we're the con- the Wonder Woman train is like moving. So if you're not on yeah. board, <laughs> too bad. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. But if they bring back yeah. Superman, great. How do you bring Batman back? Yeah. yeah. How does it do wow. you like? Do you go back to Ben Affleck and say, "Great, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do right. this the right way. We want you to come back and play Batman." Right. Or dude, he's so done. He's I know. Never I f- gonna come I back. I feel like I, yeah. I, it's, I, it's this thing though. It's like you can never say never. 
true. Because you never know. It's true. Right? It's very true. It's but always dude, possible. It's always it's possible. Always possible. <laughs> you know, and and um and it it's like it's so tough because I remember when they were kind of going back and forth. Is Flash going to be a solo right, origin right, story, right. or and then like the next year Comic Con Flash Flash points? So it's like, right. oh, are we going to yeah. use this to like bring in a new Batman yeah. and like go away with Ben Affleck? Yeah. Yeah. So like, is there going to be a version of this where it's like? Matt Reeves, your movies are so great. We love Robert Pattinson so much. Let's do a Flash movie where Flash goes into an alternate universe. Mm -hmm. Our Batman was killed, and we bring him in. And it's we like, bring back. Oh, uh, that, that's already what? a little too much. I don't even watch uh, uh, Doctor Who, but it's timey wimey. <laughs> it's too timey wimey hey, for me. Like it's just already basing it off of time travel. Yeah. only works on Back to the Future. Like, it's very difficult. Just wait till you watch Crisis on Infinite Earth. I want to say, I know. And we've had a Spider-Verse, so it's and anything's you're, possible. You're, you know what? You're right. <laughs> anything's you're possible. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Like, you would not, like, if you tried to pitch that movie years ago, people were like, that is Hell too much no. to, to do. But now, it you know, perfect. Yeah. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, that's a really good point. Right? Yeah. Never forget Spider-Verse. Again. I know. <laughs> How could I? How could I? Never. <laughs> you want to lose your card at the seat of this table? I know. I, almost, I, you know, I would give it up. Dare. Gladly because you I got was a problem so with cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me. <laughs> oh my god, so okay. funny. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, yes. The next one. Got to make sure I'm in my right folder yeah, here. There you go. Hey, there it is. All okay. Right. So this was kind of a surprising thing that The Rock talked about. He's, he's doing, currently doing the junket for uh, Jumanji, which I'm super excited to, to yes. see. Yes. I love the last one. Yeah. Um, I cannot stop talking about that movie. But Same. something that he like. Revealed that I was like, damn, damn, this is kind of surprising this early because we just got the release date. We just got that new amazing piece of artwork mm -hmm. from Boss Logic and Jim Lee. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, cool, this train is also starting to leave the station, so you better yeah, jump yeah. on board fast yeah. before it, before it's gone. Yeah. He confirmed that the Justice Society of America is going to be featured in Black Adam. That's crazy. Which, it's exciting, but I'm also like, great. But what about Justice League? Yeah. <laughs> but it would make sense for the story yeah. because, yeah. as we know, Black Adam is a character who comes from Egypt. Right. And as we know from certain characters from the Justice Society, particularly Hawkman, Carter Hall, he's a reincarnated version of an Egyptian oh, prince. Oh, Egyptian prince, yeah. yeah. So I think there definitely are opportunities for Black Adam and Carter Hall to – or Hawkman, I should say. Yeah. yeah. To sort of like cross paths at right, one point. Right, right. And or if at there's least know each other, know each other, yeah. and if there's yeah. some sort of passage of time, we can later meet Hawkman, who is now Carter Hall, part of the Justice Society of America. We've got characters like Star Girl, Alan mm -hmm. Scott, Green Lantern, Jay Garrick, Flash, mm -hmm. um, Doctor Fate, mm -hmm. and like that could potentially tie into the Black Adam movie. Yeah. Part of me is also a little worried of like, uh, is this going to be one of those things like the Batman where we're setting up right? Black Adam to fight this like whole team of heroes, and I'm right. like, wait, is that a little too much too soon? That's wow. I don't really know. With two mega team movies going on, they yeah. could run into that because if these teams aren't necessarily talking to each other, mm -hmm. is the Batman <clears throat> going to live in the same universe as this other mega team up movie? Which probably I not because this exists in the Shazam universe, which exists <laughs> in the DC universe. Once again, <laughs> back to that <laughs> argument that we were having. I mean, we could talk about this for hours. You know, really. I, 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 like the more more that these things come out and I don't know how to connect it, the more I'm like kind of impressed by it. Like I'm just like, you know what? Just go, do it. Go just wild. Go. <laughs> go wild. I mean, yeah. And Rails co <laughs> considering something that you're talking about. I, I got I got I got a theory. But mm. I'm not I'm saving it for later. Oh okay. no, okay. I got All right. Okay. But I say I'm but yeah, I say go wild, man. Go crazy. <laughs> Put everybody out there. And it's also <laughs> like, you know, if you do Justice Society and you do include characters like Jay Garrick, the Flash, and Alan mm -hmm. Scott Green Lantern. Does this mean that we're going to potentially, like, show these characters in a future Flash movie? Yeah. yeah. The Green yeah. Lantern, Alan Scott Green Lantern is technically very different from the Hal Jordan, you know, right, that right, right. era of Green Lantern. Uh, his power set sort of different. Yeah. But, like, yeah, are, the, are we going to see those characters in, like, movies that take place now? Is that going to come into play at all? Will we see an old Jay Garrick are, and are Barry we, Allen? So here's another question. Are we too much in the mm. weeds about it now? Like, are yeah. we overthinking? Are we going too comic book? Yeah, are we, yeah. are we thinking too much about the repercussions of what's going to happen, whereas maybe The Rock's thinking of it as like, this is another summer blockbuster hit just like Jumanji for yeah. me. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. just going to keep doing these fun movies, mm -hmm. not necessarily worry about the continuity of this type sure. of stuff. Because yeah, it would be cool if they try to set this stuff up, but also getting into the weeds yeah. leads to some theories, yeah. leads to some craziness, and then we could talk about it for days, literally, yeah. about how they could tie this stuff The in. one interesting thing is because Stargirl is now, is for the most part, been a member of the Justice Society, and she's been now on the CW Arrowverse as a member of the Justice Society as well. 
On top of that, she's getting her own <laughs> show coming to the CW slash mm-hmm. DC Universe. So we're going to have like three coexisting versions of Stargirl. Whoa. That's like two, one movie and two TV universe versions of her. Wow. Uh, yeah, which I have nothing against. I think obviously the Stargirl TV show is going to be singularly focused on that <laughs> character. Listen, y'all. Like Andre reminded us earlier, Spider-Verse did <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> right. Oh, and, and just so you I know, there, there's a Disney Plus movie called Stargirl, but it has nothing to do with <laughs> right. this. But right. she I, also <laughs> exists in the universe <laughs> somehow <laughs> through. Because I, I just remember with that D23, they were yeah. like, we're going to get a movie called Stargirl. It's like, how many star girls yeah. are there? God, no. <laughs> and they're like, all going to premiere. How, and how can Disney do this? No, time out. Illegal, oh, illegal oh, move. Time out. Yeah. It's a quirky. Star girl, Captain Marvel. Oh, time, time out. Time out. Time out. Hold on. Hold on. It's based on a completely different thing. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. Never mind. Never mind. I know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and, and obviously, like, if this Black Adam coexists in the same universe as Shazam, which coexists in the greater yeah. DC universe, cool. We could potentially see, or he said we will eventually see Black Adam and Shazam yeah, and then, duke it out. And then okay. Shazam released. I saw one. Did they release a deleted scene where they like there was like a scene where they were all sitting in the um, thrones and they make a reference of like, oh, there's one empty one. Uh, was it yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's a deleted scene. But on top of that, yes, I think that uh, I'm pretty sure that's that that's on the uh, special features. Yeah. But uh, not only that, in the movie itself, um, the wizard makes a reference to someone who like had the power and was kind of like a fallen version yeah. of Shazam. Okay. Um, and I always assumed that they were talking about Black Adam. Right. I don't, I don't know if that's everybody else I interpreted it that too. way. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think that empty seat. Yeah, that's. I would assume that that would be for the Rock's Black Adam character. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, last week we talked about when they announced this, we talked about how our hope, at least for me, you know, I, Black Adam has traditionally been Shazam's. Arch Nemesis. Enemy. Yeah. yeah. Nemesis. Right. Straight, yeah. Start him as a villain, build him to an anti hero, and then let's see how he kind of plays with all these other characters. And, like, I think it would be awesome to see Shazam and Superman team up to take down Black Adam. Absolutely. Or to have right. Black Adam become, like, a villain, main villain for yeah. the Justice League. Or, like, isn't yeah. there, so many isn't there an animated movie mm-hmm. where they take him down like yeah, that? Yeah, I think yeah. it's. I think it's called The Return of Black Adam. Something like that. Yeah, I yeah. know I've seen that yeah. in animated form. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I guess, I guess that's a good question. Like, yeah, what – I mean, you know, it's all speculation, but like, sure. I'm curious what the angle is going to be <laughs> with his character in this right. if mm-hmm. the idea right. later – because, like, if you make this movie where it's like he's he's a – you can't make it like he's a hero. And right, then, right. Oh, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden everybody's beefing and yeah. Black Adam all of a sudden catches yeah. So, yeah. But but I remember, you, I think you guys even talked about it. You said something about, like, how his his mindset is, like, I'm doing I'm doing justice but in my way. So maybe yes. it's one of those things of, like, same idea but different ways of handling yeah. it or that yeah, sort yeah. of thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by it by, mm-hmm. by yeah. any means. So. Yeah. I yeah, I think definitely it's, like, cool. You definitely have to kind of figure out how to bring this character in this universe. And I get that The Rock doesn't necessarily maybe want to play a villain character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think, like... If you're going to put him up against Shazam, there's got to be a reason for it. And yeah. if it's going the more anti-hero right, right, route right, right. where it's like you're saying, it's Black Adam doing things the way that he believes is the right way to do it, which is different from the moral values of what Shazam and characters like Superman think, yeah. then yeah, then I think there is a way to, for all those characters to kind of like butt heads. Mm-hmm. Or but maybe you got to build that up. Yeah. Or maybe he's just like, I know how these powers are handled. I don't yeah. appreciate anybody else having them. I don't appreciate right. you beefing with yeah. me. Exactly. So I need exactly. to get them back. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I just, as, long as, it's, as long as it's entertaining. Okay. I, say, I say make great good movies first and and continuity can figure that out later yeah <laughs> that's, that's not a bad way to look yeah. at it and i mean i think like we've i think the marvel cinematic universe has trained us or has at least tricked us into believing that continuity is like very clear in that universe they yeah. fudge stuff too oh absolutely oh, yeah. and like absolutely. no one cares because Dude, the movies are entertaining i'm still confused about the timeline in marvel in endgame I'm like, how does how do these things? I'm just like, whatever, dude. I don't dude, care. They basically were like, movie. they did basically like to to cheat their own like yeah. time travel stuff. They're like, oh yeah, this doesn't affect anything in the yeah. present, so you can kind of just yeah. branch it out and create so your own thing. It, it, at the end of the day, it re- just make a fun movie. Hey, yeah. you're right. If you're, you're right. If you're it. concerned about the continuity of Marvel Cinematic Universe, remember, War Machine changed people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> True. So right. War Machine became a completely different <laughs> person so did that yeah. doesn't even look like the original person. <laughs> no. If you can Next accept time, that, if you can accept. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you can accept that and you can accept a different Hulk. Yep. Yes. Yep. Uh, we're good. Don't we're good. worry about we're it. Good. Exactly. And remember exactly. that was that that happened now. Yeah. There yeah. were there. Uh, Look at news, Star Wars. Yeah. News flash, everyone. Yeah. There were superhero movies <clears throat> before the Marvel Cinematic Universe what? that didn't have to be You're connected. Crazy. It can happen again. Right. What? That's right. What? What? Crazy. What? Uh, what? <laughs> it's a possibility, y'all. And it's superhero a movies can exist in a universe that's not necessarily the connected Marvel Cinematic Universe. What? Exactly. I'm sorry. To, sorry for these hot takes. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> very, very, what do they call it? Uh, not comfort. Um, what's it called? 
Anyways, whatever. Let's move on to the next I, one. I'm about to say, I'm being all hardcore my, DC defense. I feel my, like I'm in the alternate universe. My right brain's now. fried right now with all this DC stuff. Uh, yeah, let's speak keep, it up. Let's keep going. Speaking of, Bring it Star on. Girl heading to the CW. So Wait, what? Th- <laughs> this is very, very interesting. Uh, man, I'm starting to wonder like how long it is before my DC Universe subscription will not matter. Yeah, how, and how that's far ahead did you pay? <laughs> uh, I got a whole year, so I'm good until right. February. Hope you get a refund. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. Star- so Star Girl has secured exclusive <laughs> linear uh, – Linear rights, where it's going to premiere on DC Universe first. Okay. The next day, it'll air on the CW. Mm -hmm. And the day after that, you'll be able to stream it on CW's um, digital streaming website. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you get it first, at least. You'll get it first on DC Universe, which is like, cool. DC Universe has now become a Patreon, basically. Basically. (laughs) Where it's like, get it first on there, and then everybody else will have access to it. Do we get some some live chats? I know, right? Yeah. Some stickers. It's like, uh, it's... I'm 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 one frustrated, two worried because yeah. I'm frustrated because I really was excited for DC Universe and I was so excited for the fact that it was going to give us things like Titan, Swamp Thing, Doom Patrol, Star Girl. Mm-hmm. Give us, allow us the opportunity to explore characters that maybe are not going to get movies right. or, or TV shows. But now when it's like Swamp Thing canceled, Doom Patrol season two, mm-hmm. HBO Max mm-hmm. and DC Universe, Star Girl, <coughs> CW and DC right. Universe. I'm like great. I love the fact that a lot of this stuff is going to be available for everyone yeah. Yeah. so they can enjoy it and, and consume it. But I don't think that it'll be enough for people to go, well, I want to get each, I want to get DC Universe. Right, right, Sargo's right. great. Uh, oh, Doom Patrol? Yeah, I want to get yeah. DC Universe. What more are they offering? It's yeah. Titans. Well, and like, bless you, Titans. I don't think you're that <laughs> they're good trying. of a show. You're trying. They're trying, yeah. but I don't think it's enough to like yeah. hook people. Yeah. We got Disney+. Plus. The Mandalorian <laughs> is like crushing it. Stuff. Yeah. And I think yeah. DC Universe needs a show like that Absolutely. for people to go, oh, shit, I need to sign up for this immediamente. Yes. Yeah. Well, devil's advocate. Yeah. Um, there's a possibility that maybe they saw something in Stargirl that was so impressive mm-hmm. right. that they're like, we we don't want to put this behind a paywall. Right. Like, yeah. We need right. to get this in. You know, and considering you know the, the, the speculation about what's going on with Black Adam or yeah. just right. in general – Maybe there is something where they say like this character could you know be really big and obviously you know they're I mean they're losing arrow, like arrows ending right. and we don't know how long some of the other shows will be exactly anyway. so maybe they're just seeing this as like this really fits the CW network and which which just on the basis alone even if you don't know anything right. about the character it yeah. feels like it's something that I could be like oh yeah Star Girl Supergirl right. you know right. Flash Riverdale it could be yeah, a, CW drama. a CW drama yeah, yeah. It's a CW show so maybe they're just something there or maybe maybe you know or on the flip side when you think of things like Titans Doom Patrol maybe they're looking at Star Girl and being like well this is great for DC Universe because mm-hmm. it's a DC property but maybe it's not. The, the same mold as the other shows, sure. and so something like CW, we feel like that's gonna be a great way to gain an audience uh, so outside of the service. Here's that. another question for you guys: Yeah, in a world where we have Disney pouring how much per episode for Mandalorian? Like, it's like uh, eleven million or something like that. Be even more, I think. Right? Yeah, I think, think it's a hundred million for the whole season. Do you think there will ever be a time where this CW style of making TV shows will not be enough to compete? Like, do you think there's always going to be an audience for the CW type of show, serialized, I mean, con- batty of the week sure. kind of? I think considering how long a show like Supernatural, or not, yeah. not Supernatural, no. Yeah. Jensen, <laughs> Jensen Ackles, it's Supernatural, right? I think it was Supernatural. Yeah. Super- right? That's the show that's only like 15 years. Yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. With him yeah. and Jensen Ackles, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, considering how like long that's lasted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think if you continue to make those series fun and entertaining, I think the problem that those some of those CW shows, those DC ones specifically, mm-hmm. they've become too repetitive yeah, and they're too right. much of the same right, right, right. i personally have never seen supernatural but i think the right. reason why it has such a a rabid fan base and a very enthusiastic fan base is yeah. because like they've done su- they figured out a way to make those characters feel very special to the audience right and i don't know if the dc <laughs> versions of those shows have found that yet right. well that might be why they're doing something like this because yeah. maybe maybe star girl the test because the, the average the dc shows has been out so already for dc universe there are only a few episodes or like for which one? For like so, like Titan season one was mm-hmm. how many episodes? Uh, 12, they, I think they, yeah, they're both been about twelve, thirteen. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so maybe this is a test that they're doing because that's the, like I, look every time I see these commercials for these shows, I'm like, mm. gosh, I want to, but you're five seasons in and twenty two <laughs> episodes, and that's everyone why we says, don't do them. And yeah. there's and yeah. I know that of you know, so it's it's a, it's a, it's kind of a task. So maybe this is their opportunity to be like, well, let's see what happens right. if a shorter version yes. is like that. And so maybe what ends up happening is instead of having 
a 22 episode season of a superhero show yeah. where you do feel like, well, some of these are filler, some of these are, are essential, whatever. Then it's like, okay, well, we'll have 13 episodes of this show, and then we'll swap it out with 13 episodes of this show, right. and then those shows are tight. Andre, I we're gonna make you a permanent back. residence on this show <laughs> because <laughs> you are preaching the things that we've been talking about for years. We've been we've been talking about this for a while, but that's that's kind of what I'm trying to get to yeah. though. Is yeah. like that method has been proven. Netflix, oh, yeah. Netflix showed that they can do Come anything. On. Yeah, Stranger yeah. Things, Daredevil, yep. Jessica Jones, or any cable, all those shows, yeah, all the cable networks. Yeah. Right, like, yeah. the, and but that's the thing though, is that old school way of making a twenty six episode season. Yeah. Right. Is it too much? Is there too much filler? Like, I think I, so. I personally believe that if DC wanted us to really latch on to all of this stuff that they're doing, they really need to pour that money on to, in, I mean, into these series, like more than just yeah. a. a a CW show. Imagine if you took the 23 episode budget of The Flash, mm -hmm. you took all of that and you invested it into an 8 to 10 episode. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like Condensed. Same how, amount. Yeah. Exactly. Right, right, right. How much do those visual effects drastically increase? How much does I'm the saying. storytelling feel so much tighter and so right. much more to the point right. because you do that? And that's, uh, once again, back to, yeah. to what, I'm, what I was trying to say is that I feel like they just need to tighten up the ropes a little yeah. bit because the DC characters deserve this. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. they, if there's anybody who deserves this, before the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe happened, the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited cartoon shows were the greatest superhero thing I had ever Ooh. seen. Ah. Truth. And, yeah. and, and that was just a fact. I yeah. had yeah. never been in awe like that. And Dude, I was in awe of Super Friends. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. these, yeah. these characters deserve that touch that yeah. everybody else is putting into other yeah. things and other networks but these characters just deserve that for 100%. sure yeah and let's just let's just be real okay look I, I, I know we're all excited about our streaming services and we're yeah. all excited about these original programs yeah. but we're being tested. Let's just be yeah. honest. No, you're real. right. You're because I'm going to tell you right, right now if the, man, the way the Mandalorian is going yeah. if there is ever a moment on any Disney owned network where they're like Man, we had to cancel some show. We got eight free weeks, and we don't know what to put there. And right. the Mandalorian's just sitting there yeah, after for yeah. a while. You know they're gonna be like, let's do a special event. Mm -hmm. right. So right. like I, I, you know, as much as it's cool to get this stuff exclusive, and I think that's how we should look at it. Is that you're mm -hmm. getting this stuff exclusive first, yeah. mm -hmm. but to act like none of these shows will ever be on a television no, network yeah. or right, ever right, get right. cut down to like. That's why they're investing so yeah. much in this because yeah. now if they're like, okay, you know what? We got 10 weeks to show the show. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're putting 10 weeks of a show that got like movie investment, yeah. but right, now right, it's right. on television yeah. and it's like, whoa, we can do this. Yeah. And now you have the opportunity to that. And this might be their way of showing like, let's put that movie money into TV, mm -hmm. shorten it up. Yes. And, and like right. show that it's good and just keep rotating the stuff out right, right, because right. that's what's going to make network television feel a little more fresh. It's, it's changing. Things are yeah. evolving. Things are changing. And I feel like this just needs to catch up a little yeah. bit. But yeah. you'll still get your three hour, uh, your three or your three camera sitcoms. <clears throat> oh, for sure. They'll Absolutely. Still, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, they'll, they'll be there. They'll yeah. Be they'll be there. Still, they won't go right. nowhere. Right. Last Man Standing, I think it's still on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just, just last night I went to the theater and I watched Primal in a, on a movie, on a theater screen. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a cut down of the first four episodes yeah. and I'm like cool it's 88 minutes of just yeah. like pure Gendy greatness beautifulness yeah. so yeah. good and I love it and I think you're absolutely right I mean I if they put them out which mm -hmm. who knows we talked about this last time. I'm not even going to touch the, the physical media thing but like <laughs> if they release 4k box a box like if they release a box set of the Mandalorian season one yeah. am I going to buy it 100% Hell yeah. am I still going to own it. Disney plus 100% yeah. Yeah. I own Half of the CW shows on Blu-ray. Right, right, right. I still am going to have DC Universe yeah. because, like, yeah, I want accessibility to be able to watch it there, but I also want to be able to, like, go watch the special features yeah. in my room. Yeah. What if I'm camping somewhere and yeah. all I have yeah. is a Blu-ray player and a TV? Yeah. You know, yeah. Or, like, or vice projector. versa. All I have is my phone. It's right. like, I'm exactly. not going to bring my discs with right. me. Right, exactly. So, yeah, yeah I, and I agree with you on that. You guys have changed my mind about yeah. physical media for sure. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> I, I, was, I was on a show on the full screen network, uh -huh. the digital service they have. Guess where you can find those episodes? <laughs> <laughs> so, disappeared um, into the ether. Um, so discs are important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Do you, uh, or at least an MP4 file? Do yeah. something. Do something. Do you do you collect physical media, or are you mostly just oh, all digital? Way more than I should. Yeah, Andre, I'm, on a four, so I'm, I'm telling you, I'm you're, on you're a 4K perfect. kit. I'm on a 4K kit, which yeah. reminds me, yeah. I forgot. I'm so sorry. I got some uh, 3D, a couple 3D movies to give you. <laughs> If you don't have them already, you just made, I just heard Hector's boner uh, somewhere. <laughs> is in, that Hector in, right here? In, in, where is no. he? Qatar? 
<laughs> in Qatar. He's, he's literally flying from yeah. Qatar right now. He's, Give those to me. He's jumping with a huge yeah. boner. Just oh like, my god! Yeah, you yeah. said three D. It's, it's yeah, it's shared. It's, it's communal. Oh. I know that you guys like that. So I was like, I'll just bring them by. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's uh, Wreck It Ralph and uh, something else. I don't have that. So Hector has those. So yeah. I'm bye, sure we'll hear. Yeah. I'm sure we'll hear. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know. It's but it's like it's really t- it's one of those things. that's like it's really tough for for people like us to like not collect physical media because like. Some, I mean, truthfully, sometimes we just get it, and it's like, yeah. well, I'm not going to yeah. sell it. If yeah. someone gives it to me for free, I'm going right. to keep it. Right, right. But like, yeah, there's certain things that I just I want to own it. But yeah. absolutely, but yeah, okay. but like, yeah, the, the, this the with so much money being yeah. invested in this stuff, like they, they're going to find it different opportunities. So of I, I I think this is a cool idea. Yeah. I I do under, but I do understand from the side of like. Hey man, I'm paying. <laughs> right. I'm well, paying yeah. you for a month yeah. to be like, this is mine, and then you put this and out there you, to the masses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's even like <laughs> honestly, even even a little bit like beyond that, like yeah, yeah I mean, okay. For me, it's not a big deal to pay for DC Universe because I love DC and I want access to all that stuff and yeah. and blah, 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 blah. But it also then makes me worried about, like, what's the future of that streaming platform? Right, is exactly. it then just going to, like how we talked about last week, is it just going to merge into HBO Max and right. it's like it goes away? I right. think, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I think that if you're going – because they're already saying that if you get HBO Max, you'll get HBO now. I think so. Yeah. So uh, just throw DC Universe in there. Cause they I mean, should. Cause they it, really cause should. Because who – it doesn't make sense to pay – whatever fifteen dollars for HBO Max and then another amount for another Warner Brothers property right. where you're already taking yeah. some of the shows and putting them on exactly uh, different on, tiers on, yeah. of releases. It's, gonna get, yeah. it's too much. If Stick anything it in there. Yeah. yeah. If anything do it, it do it the way like Disney Plus is doing with Hulu right, and right, right. what's the other one? Hulu and ESPN. ESPN. Yeah. It's yeah. like cool if I'm gonna pay fifteen ninety nine but I'm already a subscriber to DC Universe, yeah. Yeah. you should give me some sort of like pro rated still keep um, DC Universe for the comic aspect. Yeah, like, yeah, right, that, yeah. That's a, I think that is a very special I mean I would just keep them as still separate apps. Yeah. And just like pro rate it. Right. Or something. Yeah. You know? I we'll don't see. know, guys. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Don't you? Uh, don't you? I don't know, guys. Put me. us in charge. Just put us in charge. Is what <laughs> I'm don't you? To I say. don't know, guys. Me. Just, yeah. just put us but in now, charge. We'll solve wanna, everything. If you want to save money, just wait a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait two days. <laughs> and if you don't have CW, wait two days, <laughs> wait two and you can stream it for free. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll still be relevant. You're good. It'll You're still good. be trending. <laughs> um, all right. So this thing is mostly for me because, like, I'm just way too disgustingly excited for Crisis on Infinite Earths. No, please, please. Because I, I want to ask you just before we jump into this real quick. Sure. Okay, if I am like completely like I have seen like two flashes and <laughs> and, and and half a uh, half of the tomorrows. Yeah. Like, am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're no it's all than good. But I am. Yeah. But if I'm super excited for this, am I gonna yeah. be good? Like, am, if, will I be all if right? On, t- if I'm being completely honest, if I can make a recommendation, if you have the time. I would honestly just watch the crossover episodes from each season. Okay. Because I watched the Flash Supergirl one. Okay. All that right. was a good one. That was all a fun right. one. That's that was the a fun only one. one I've seen, too. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's honestly all I, because, again, not to, like, I'm not trying to badmouth these shows. No. They're very rinse and repeat for a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, sometimes for those shows, all that matters is the, uh, the first episode, the winter finale, and the finale itself. Because yeah. right, you're like, right, okay, right. I kind of can, can pick up the rest of it. You can draw. All yeah. I've done. For the last three seasons, I've just watched the crossover episodes, and they do a good enough job of setting up what's going to happen in the next crossover that, like, yeah, in a perfect world, I probably should watch the leading up episodes of, like, Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, Batwoman. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's not necessarily a requirement, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think you can go in and just watch these, uh, these five episodes, and you'll still feel satisfied yeah mm-hmm. and let me just preface it with, I, I would love to watch all these oh it's, it's for just, sure yeah if i had it's, the time it's literally right, right, right. 300 episodes that's, of television <laughs> that's why we don't watch them because we don't have the time yeah i wish it's i, I wish it would have started early that's all. i wish it was i know when it and started. i've and i've d- i think about three times i've started arrow and then stopped yeah. Yeah. and started and then flash and legends it's really hard it's and like daunting. i have all the blu-rays it's daunting. but it's like getting through it is like yeah. not an easy task and sometimes yeah, you're yeah. like uh, this lull is taking so long. I'll eventually get to it. But I mean, like the biggest thing for me personally, the exciting things for me is like getting Brandon Routh back as Superman. Yes. Getting Tom Welling back as Clark Kent. That's what got me, man. Getting yeah. Kevin Conroy to play Bruce Wayne. Yep. So good. Yep. And it so looks good. like based on the images that we got, he's going to play the Kingdom Show that Come image. Show version that of Bruce Wayne. And I'm Dang. like, 
my brain is going to <laughs> spin it and to go inside out, and yep. it's going to come out my ears because, like, I'm going to lose <laughs> my shiznits <laughs> when I watch this. DC just <laughs> dominates that television. Dude, right yeah, there. it's amazing. Yeah. Well, television and the direct-to-video, yeah. direct yeah. dvd I always said direct-to-video. The animated video. stuff. Direct-to-VHS yeah. yeah. direct direct with a clamshell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Direct-to-DVD. Yeah. There it is. Uh, yeah, animated stuff. They just yeah. so, I mean, they have always dominated them. Yeah, yeah. I agreed. Oh. I agreed. I'm yeah. so pumped for this, and like I've been rewatching a lot of Smallville, and I think it's because like that show's not current, and I can kind of do it at my own pace, and I don't feel mm-hmm. behind because yeah. I've already seen the whole series. Mm-hmm. It's been fun just to rewatch it, but then like the fact that we're gonna get so many of these returning characters coming back for this five episode incredible like crossover event, yeah. as like someone who has grown up reading DC comic books and experienced Crisis on Infinite Earths mm-hmm. in the comic books. Mm-hmm. And then seeing all this stuff sort of like these crossovers build up year after year for these yeah. shows. I'm like, dude, this is – if you've been following this <laughs> every single week for the last uh-huh. like yeah. 10 years, one, incredible work. Yeah. And two, what a reward for you. <laughs> right, yeah. right, This right, is right, your right. MCU basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was like, right. this is the TV equivalent of that. Yeah. yeah. Sure, because yeah. like you've been watching these shows and they've had like the occasional like, mm-hmm. I'm going to read them over there. But right. like – yeah, this is this is this it's, is their this is their yeah. infinity. This is their end game. This is it's it's impressive actually. Yeah. It's super super impressive. I love it. Uh, I, I, love I it. cannot wait. And I think like having Kevin Conroy Genius. finally having the ability <laughs> to come and play a live action version Genius. of the character oh, that he's voiced man. for 25 years is so dope. Oh, okay. Man. Okay. Uh, this might be me asking for too much now. What's up? But okay, cuz he's an older Bruce Wayne, right? Yes. Uh-huh. So the last time I ever saw an older Bruce Wayne uh-huh. was an animated series <laughs> uh-huh. with, uh-huh. with some red logo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh-huh. just, uh, is that is that possible? Look, if I don't think this will happen. Okay, but <laughs> I mean, that's, I know. Too honestly, far, too like, far. okay, if you were really going to like honor what's come before, yeah. if Will Friedel showed up as like Terry McGinnis, <laughs> oh I would flip the table over. <laughs> and, and and like to have him be a more like established. He's already been Batman for yeah, years. And I'm like. Right. Bro, you, y'all are really yeah. going all no, Thanos, out. Thanos who? Thanos yeah. what? Deep For real. Deep what? It would Deep be amazing. Cuts. But I think oh, yeah. part of me wishes it. Part of me thinks it's not going to happen, mostly okay. because it seems like they're pulling from the Kingdom Come version of Bruce, okay. Okay. Bruce Wayne. And I, I, don't know if, That's fair. I don't know if Terry McGinnis Batman exists in that universe. Because <sighs> right. that, That's comic a book, question for that comic book predates yeah. Batman Beyond, so right, probably right, right. not. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I, was, I, was mixing, I was mixing cartoon logic with but, <laughs> comic book logic. <laughs> but, but because this is a TV thing and because it's going to be brief, yeah. if you mix and match the continuity and the history – I don't think Kevin Conroy's Bruce Wayne is going to exist in the same continuity as Brandon Routh's Superman. Right. But if he does, well, I mean, I guess actually you could because Superman ages at a much slower rate. Oh, We're getting in the yeah. weeds again, homie. Getting in the weeds again. <laughs> this is so hard to talk about. Get just, out of them weeds. I'm just so excited for it. But look, it's not a, it's not a complete impossibility because yeah. if you're going to tell yeah. us that – Kevin Conroy's Batman exists in the same world as Brandon Routh Superman. Brandon Routh Superman is technically the Christopher Reeve Superman. So like all yeah. of that aging stuff, yeah. it would work. It it could and would work. Adam, I think at this point we just need to watch the show. It's happens. so hard. It's, it's, really not, it's just not that far, far away. Show. Right. It's almost here. And it's I know you're super duper here. excited for this. So it how, starts okay, December 8th. So how is this working? So it's like it's various <laughs> shows, various episodes of yeah, various, shows various shows over the course of the – the next couple months? Yeah, so the first three episodes are going to start. So December 8th, you're going to have the first – part one will be the Supergirl episode. Okay. Part two will be the Batwoman episode on Monday. Okay. Part three will be the Flash episode on Tuesday. Okay, so they're the same week. So it's not yeah. like you're like, okay, okay, that helps. Yeah. So, and, but, so <laughs> the first three episodes, and then we're going to take a break. And in okay. January, oh. the episode of Arrow will be part four, and the episode of Legends of Tomorrow will be part five, the, the final Crisis on Infinite Earths <laughs> Okay. The, the conclusion. The that's conclusion. conclusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's five episodes total. Yeah. 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 And then Arrow, I that's think – That's really dope. I think Arrow, because I think it's eight or ten episodes this mm-hmm. season – It'll be like one of the last episodes of Arrow, okay. and then that nah. show will end. Oh, that's gonna be so cool! I know. That's, a, oh, that's a good way to end it. For sure. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Nice, it's gonna man. be that's it's nice. gonna be epic. I, I I cannot wait. And like, <laughs> I know a lot of people have a, a varying <laughs> opinions about the DC TV stuff, but like, you have to commend them for just going for mm-hmm. it. Agreed. Like they, they just committed agreed. and went for yeah. it. Speaking of physical media, they need to put all that needs to be a set. Like yeah, all yeah. the crossover episodes as like a nice oh my god collector's edition cool. with like pictures and stuff like yeah. that. We'll just keep all the that guys get on so set. Hard interviews and stuff. I think it would be. I think if uh, I think it would be a challenge because 
all the lead up stuff like how do you how do you make a blu-ray for crisis on infinite earths without doing the lead up episodes for their respective seasons doesn't matter. I mean, <laughs> <probably>. <laughs> you get a book, though. It's, yeah. No, that's true. You get an art book. As long as you get an art book, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Look, in some in some far future, there will be some crazy collector's edition that's going to yeah. be like three thousand oh, dollars. Yeah, you know. That'll you be know. like the CW Arrowverse, right, and right, it'll right, be right. everything. And my dumb ass will probably buy it. But no, I think that if you did like a, if you did like a you did Christ on Infinite Earth, that's like the, that's like the, the artwork. Yeah. And that's like the main part of it. And then you throw in some bonus episodes of other crossovers. And True. You throw a bunch of special features. That'd be like awesome. Or you just make like yeah. a special like thirty minute recap episode. Yes. Yeah. Of like what's yeah. happening oh, in all yeah. the shows. That, that could be one of the special features. Yeah. Like have yeah. someone do like a, a flash. Kevin recap Smith yeah. recapping someone, the whole thing. Well, yeah. They like yeah. go super fast and just tell you everything that happened. Leading that would be you up cool. To I it. feel like on this show we give DC and Marvel. So many like cash making <laughs> opportunities, and y'all never do it. Residuals, Come on, nah. Henry, Henry, tell somebody, <laughs> tell somebody about our ideas, Henry. Margot Robbie, we if you're watching you. this, Margo. cash money, cash money. We got you. We're looking we out got for you, you. Booboos. We got you, <laughs> Scooby Doo. Let me know who's in the hand of our bear first. <laughs> oh my can, goodness! Can I can I drop a small quick theory before we go to the next thing? Hundred yeah. percent. What if, and this, again, this is this is like my Batman Beyond thing. I might yeah. be asking for too much here. Yeah. Nah. But we are definitely setting up multiple universes mm-hmm. in these DC shows. Mm-hmm. We just had had numerous conversations about what the heck are all the universes in the movie world. Right. Is it possible that the TV shows are kind of being like the... We're going to teach you a little. This is like the tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cinematic tutorial. The tutorial of how this works so that uh-huh. when we start throwing some of these ideas in the mm-hmm. big budget movie pl- land, you're like, oh, okay, I get that. I saw Christ on the Earth. So I understand how this goes. So then you can have your whatever DC movie you want, whenever you want, how you want. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about it with the animated right. movies, yeah. some of them some of them connect, some yeah. of them some don't. don't. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm wondering if this is just another way of them establishing, look, we have these characters, you know these characters, but we're going to constantly keep telling you different iterations, different stories. Don't worry about which ones connect and which and ones don't. And I think like we can always make it connect with this even infinite Earth. Even side Marvel, idea. like kind of, with, I mean, the MCU kind of did it because at the end of Endgame, you're like, oh, Steve Rogers went and lived in an alternate timeline. Yeah. And blah blah yeah. blah blah. Yeah. yeah. And for the most part, people have been like, okay, that makes sense to but me. They, but yeah. I feel like people still see that as like, but that's still the one. Oh, for sure. Thing. Yeah. Because yeah. it all ties back to the yeah. same concept. But if you see something like this and go, okay, there's different worlds. Then yeah. Yeah. Then you can accept that whatever Black Adam is setting up over here is different from whatever mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Joker mm-hmm. is doing over here, which is different yeah, from whatever the Batman sure. is over here. Right. And you're not sitting there going, like, well, how do they all connect? You just go, oh, that's just how DC does it. Yeah. For sure. DC, Marvel's one connected universe. DC is multiple universes. I think, Got it. I think, they, I think they are doing universes. that. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I think they are doing that, but not with the TV stuff. Because from what we've talked about in the past is that those two departments generally don't really talk to each other. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, don't mean like, I don't mean like necessarily like having the TV characters jump into movies. I'm right. just meaning just letting people aware that we're right. DC – no matter this is where a you part see of our lore. Yeah, this, 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 this is, yeah, this is how yeah. we do things. But yeah. I think they're more reaching the masses with things like the Joker. Like yeah. the new Joker, which is kind of set in a whole different universe than everything else that's been happening. Yeah. And that was wildly successful. So I think, yes, you're on to something with that. Uh, but I think it's going to be done in sort of a different route rather mm-hmm. than yeah. like having the people who watch the TV say, oh, well, we're yeah. the leaders. We know about this. Yeah. <laughs> we know all about it, guys. So just listen. Okay. Um, I mean, like, I'm just curious. The yeah. fact that, like, the John Wesley ship 90s Flash TV right. series is in these Arrowverse one, shows, yeah. I'm yeah. like, yeah. hell yeah. That's a yeah. deep cut. That's yeah. a real and the fact, deep cut. I mean, they're, they're connecting this with Smallville. Like, I never would have thought yeah. of that, but that's so great. Please, yeah. they got to they gotta play the song, though. They, okay. <laughs> oh, never mind. I'm not going to tell you anything. <laughs> You need to go. Oh, ah, gosh. Ah, oh, no. Do I, did no, they no, do it already? You no, need no, to no. go watch last season's crossover. Oh, God. You got to watch it. Oh, God. Uh, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. I have so, so much to learn. So good. So Teaching good. So your good. TV ways. Oh, man. So good. Uh, we're going to end this off talking about Star Wars. Yay. Galaxy Woo. far, far away. Uh, we're also going to be obviously talking about The Mandalorian on yeah. the podcast with Andre. Can't wait to talk about that. But the movies. Yeah. The Star, when it comes to Star Wars movies. That's it. Hoof. There's been so many varying opinions about the movies and what people think about them and all that sort of stuff. And a lot of people have started talking about like, well, what does this mean for Kathleen Kennedy? When you have such a divisive fan base, what is this, what kind of pressure that this, does this put on someone who's really supposed to be in charge of all of this stuff? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. They do have a movie lined up for 2022. They're going to hold off on announcing the director until January after the Rise of Skywalker releases, which 
totally fine. And I know Bob Iger has talked a lot about, well, maybe we like jumped out the gate a little too strong mm-hmm, with Star mm-hmm, Wars. Mm-hmm. That's a fair statement. I personally agree with that. I, I, I've always loved the idea that like I had to patiently wait three yeah. years for a Star Wars movie. Right. And now it's like every year we're going to throw Star Wars at yeah. you. I'm like, yeah. I don't need that. Yeah. And I know a lot of people always talk about like, well, Marvel does it. I'm like, yeah, Not but Marvel has like, they figured out the formula and they've done it their own way. Yeah. Star Wars doesn't need to follow that. And Marvel no. movies, even though it's one universe, each one of those movies plays around in different genres. Yes. Yeah. Whereas Star Wars has been a very similar line. Even yeah, even right. the ones that you're like, well, I like this one over this one. If yeah. you really nail it down, it's it's the same. Yeah. It's, and it's also, structure-wise. Also, I think th- the root cause of the divisiveness is because people have been creating – and reminiscing about this universe since the 70s. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. There is hardcore fandom and loyalty to this and things that people have thought about for a very long time. That And a lore that was established and then removed. A, right. Established <laughs> and removed. All yeah. of a sudden it's legends now and then there's a new lore. Yeah. So there are things that this is an old f- uh, fandom that is going to be difficult to crack. And I agree with Kath- Kathleen Kennedy. It's kind of difficult because people are so, so attached to things. Mm-hmm. And when you mess with things that people are attached to, I don't know if you guys know, but the internet gets mad sometimes, Sometimes, guys. yeah. yeah. I don't know That's if you guys knew this. But and then yeah. with Star Wars as well. I mean, like, we were just talking about like all these infinite universes and stuff like yeah. that. But you, that's something that you don't have in Star Wars. So right, 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 if right. you decide, I want to introduce this thing, you got to probably like talk to every person that has you know, right. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, history and knowledge to yeah. be able to go, can you even do that? Right. Does right. that even work? Yeah. yeah. You know, I is was, that allowed? I was watching um, – a documentary that came out, I think, late 90s, about episode one when it came out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And listening to George Lucas address the hatred that he got for episode one was really interesting to watch because mm-hmm. I feel like we're reliving that every single time a new Star Wars movie is dropped. 100%. Drop, yeah. Which sucks because if the creator, granted, however you feel about those episode one, two, and sure. three movies – if the creator gives you something and people are still rabidly angry about this, like what does that do for the future of these movies? Yeah. Are you never going to be able to make the fan base happy? Like right. what if the what creator is... works on it, you have a problem. If the, someone new works on it, you have a right, problem. Exactly. If it's too much like the original, you have a problem. If you if change too enough, much, you yeah. have a problem. <laughs> it's an very, impossible. very difficult. It's yeah. impossible. Yeah. But and yet the yeah. thing that's working is the television series that allows oh, it which to we expand. will talk about later in mm. a um, mm. Patreon mm. thing. Mm. But uh. I mean, that's definitely one of the things that <laughs> Kathleen Ten- Kennedy has talked about is like it's a very it's a it's a fan base that has very particular wants, needs and expectations. And for them, when they're trying to crack, you know what they want to do going forward, mm-hmm. a lot of it is like, well, do we go to the past? Yeah. Do we go to the right, future? Right, right. Do we try like what you're saying of like, do we try and like just go into a whole different galaxy? I, yeah. Is that a possibility? Hell yeah. Hell like, yeah. how would all of that work? And I think like. That is part of the thing that makes Star Wars hard. And I do also believe that because they changed the canon and it's now a brand new canon with brand new mm-hmm. stories and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. yeah, you there are elements that I think you can take from comic books and books mm-hmm. and graphic mm-hmm. novels like they did with Thrawn and Star Wars Rebels and repurpose them. But I don't think they're going to necessarily take a particular story and just make it work in their new continuity. That's, right, that's right, what right. I was curious about. I wonder I wonder if what would have happened if I mean obviously yeah because I have even read or heard of like even within the stuff that got tossed that some mm-hmm. of that does contradict each other sometimes mm-hmm, but like mm-hmm. I'm wondering what kind of experience would have happened if they said okay we're not going to use everything but yeah. there is something in this story that or this story like, that we yeah. like and we're going to do now, I mean not you know, to the letter, but like sure. some interpretation of that. Yeah. Um, I think that would have been, I mean like Heir to the Empire, those like sequel Thrawn, the, basically the Thrawn, Thrawn trilogy yeah, yeah, right, yeah. is like, you could have adapted those into movies, but like, we're not in that timeline. Like Mark Hamill, right. Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford are now old. Yeah. Exactly. So like, if you adapt those books, if you would have done that, would you right. have now aged up all those characters from the books? Right, right, would people right. still be mad about that? Like, right, right, oh, but this takes place this many years after Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Cool. It's been 32 years in real time. Like, yeah. we're not gonna, like 
we can't make that movie yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's not yeah. possible. Or maybe that's why they keep trying to make CGI people, right? <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> just in case. And just it, just exactly. Case. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's also like you. I think as Lucasfilm, you have to make a commitment and just say, "Great, let's not focus on the Skywalker timeline anymore." I think yeah. things like Mandalorian are cool because it's such a big gap between six and seven that you can right. kind of play right. with that. Yeah. And that, like that's there are particular things that make me excited about playing mm-hmm. in between timelines, but like. Yeah, I think if you're going to move Star Wars forward, let's get out of that 64-year time period yeah. of the Skywalker saga. <laughs> let's go back 1,000 years. Let's go forward 100 years. Yeah, yeah I agree. Like, let's I start agree. doing new things. Let's go over like, here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's just go <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like, take, yeah, like, take yeah. the camera, just go <laughs> to the left. Look, there's some things What's going on here in space, too. What's Alien doing <laughs> over there? <laughs> exactly. Okay. And I think with Star Wars, you can... And I think that's the only way that this universe has the opportunity to move forward. Yeah, and like yeah. she talked about Ryan Johnson and how she right. was happy with what he did because it was bold, different, and it challenged Agreed. what people knew yeah. and loved about Star Wars. Is the movie perfect? Of course not. No. Of course there are things about the movie that don't work. But the idea of pushing something beyond the point of what we expect right. to me is like – that at least is intriguing and interesting. Yeah, I think well, if you yeah. would have just rinsed and repeat Star Wars again and done the same thing, it's like, all right, I don't. Right, it it would have given us to me personally. I feel like forward is the way to go for sure. Yeah, yeah. there's there's definitely cool things that you could do with Knights of the Old Republic and even pre. There's there's old Sith that you could really get yeah. into who didn't even encounter Jedi because the Jedi and the Sith weren't necessarily a thing. Like ancient ancient Jedi. Yeah, stuff that you imagine that you can like. Address. Gendy's Clone Wars mixed with Primal. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my that would god! Blow my that would be brain amazing, apart. dude. Like prehistoric when people didn't even know what the Force was. They just yeah. people were imbued, and with they these. still had like the early versions of like a lightsaber right, exactly. and not knowing exactly, exactly like what all it meant. So that that is cool. But I think moving on, and for I, I think the future of the franchise, mm. moving on to the future is really the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the fan base probably doesn't see it that way. Me mm. personally, I love change. I really embrace change. That's why I love The Last Jedi because I saw those little inklings of like, guys, we're trying to progress this forward a little bit. We're really trying to kind of break out of the rinse and repeat thing that we've seen with previous movies and previous uh, inter- iterations. I really love Star Wars Rebels because that's still kind of playing in the same timeline. Darth Maul plays a huge part yeah. in this, but you get to see New what things. what Maul is doing and how he survived being sliced in half mm-hmm. and what he's trying to achieve. And it gives that character some great depth, yeah. which is why I like things like that. But yeah. for the overall franchise, let's move it forward. Yeah, I think that what I would like to see, when I, and I think that's a great example of, yeah. of what Star Wars, I, or I've, I don't know, I don't want to speak for fandom or anything but you know everyone has a different opinion but like yeah. i think what has made some of the other ips or temples work mm-hmm. is because even though they're based on several old properties mm-hmm. what they have created is the new thing mm-hmm. right and it's like right. very much specific for them and so you can look at it as say a comic book fan and say marvel dc for example and go right. oh i know that reference this and that right. but for someone who has no prior knowledge that right. this is exactly. their first time exactly. they can go in and go oh this is just a cool thing yeah and i think star wars is still in this weird area where you're like trying to make it a new thing but yeah. you still have to establish everything like like yeah. i'm just be real personally I feel like all the Luke, Leia, Han stuff, I I would have been fine with that ending at Force Awakens. Oh, yeah. Because if you're going to oh, get yeah. bringing all these new characters, Ray, you can bring Ray Finn, Poe, and all them. Right. Like, d- clean up all the Skywalker stuff, yep. boom, yeah. and then episode and A it, beyond, let's focus on these new people because in that right. way, it's like now we're focusing on what right. is the current thing. Right. And then yeah. that way, if you're like, hey, I just like my old stuff, I'm yeah. out. Right. Or if you're like, hey, I'm into this new stuff, I'm in. Right. It's at least taking that, that tie. But I think this weird kind of like – we want the old fans to be here, but we yeah. also want you to accept that this is different. But we right, also don't right, want right. to go too far different. So we're gonna, uh, you know, it's but like we it's weird gonna, yeah. dance. It's, it's too much it's like dancing. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, like you're, you're saying, if you come in and going like, we just want to make a show like Rebels, we want to show yeah. like, like Mandalorian, and yeah. we're gonna have this story. But then when there is a moment to go, hey, you know what? We can connect this classic exactly. thing into it. Exactly. Then, then, then fine, just right. do yeah, it. Right. But like that, it's Agreed. just you know. I, I, I also what do like I know? To, I don't run a studio. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I, just, I just watch movies. And another thing, too, that I think we, we forget about a lot is there was a, pre, there was a world before Star Wars even existed. Yeah. yeah. When Star Wars was the new, bold, yeah. groundbreaking yeah. thing. Exactly, yeah. And that is part of it. The, 
and and I don't think people have moved on from it. Like it was new, bold, and exciting. Let's make it new, bold, and exciting have you, again. Have you all seen Freddie Prince Jr.'s rant about Star Wars? I don't think I so. did. I saw, I saw it's part of it. Amazing. It's <laughs> Pizza <laughs> Chef. Well, he but he talks about it. and He says like a lot of people are just mad because Star Wars has not aged. It's like with them. It's yeah. not aged with them. Yeah. It's trying to do new things and bring new people right, in. Right, right. And it's not necessarily just for you. Right. It's for kids. Yeah. Who are young now? It's yep. f- meant for it's yep. meant for everyone, and like, I'm totally okay with that. Yeah, yeah. And like, I understand. Like, the prequels were for me when I was a kid. Yeah. This new trilogy is for kids who are growing up now. Yeah. The original trilogy was for you when you were seven. <laughs> and it's if you're oh, even born. Because remember, this yeah, a, right, exactly. A lot of people that I were not born when, I was first nine Star Wars when I first saw them. So of course I have an attachment. I to was them. 27 years old when I saw the original trilogy. Yeah. yeah. So it was I like didn't three have days that ago. Attach- yeah, basically three <laughs> yeah. days ago. Oh no, I came. I, I came late in the Star Wars because because by the time that I even was hearing about Star Wars, that was yeah. like when they were hardcore on the Ewoks, and I yeah. was like, okay, <laughs> this, I'm mixing them up with Smurfs and, and <laughs> chipmunks. They're no different than me. It's until later to someone was like, well, there's all this other stuff. Star Wars is like this weird franchise where I I like. Knew so much about it without ever seeing a yes. movie. Yeah. Like it's like like, like I sure. knew I knew who Luke was, I knew who yeah. Leia was, I knew all right. the relationships, I knew Darth yeah. Vader, I knew everything. Yeah. But then when I sat down and watched one like years later, I go, I don't think I ever saw this in full. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. How did I feel like yeah. I've seen this movie? I but had to force myself to sit down to <laughs> yeah. watch them. I'm like, I don't understand this. I need to understand. Yeah, it. yeah it's really weird. But it, but it just but then that show but that uh, that shows how big uh, in pop culture it right. is. Like exactly. like I'm not even joking. Like the other night, I looked up that. Um, uh, when Richard Pryor had a, a short-lived television show, he uh-huh. had a Star Wars sketch That's on it right. where yeah. he used like actual uh, uh, puppets and everything from yeah. Star Wars. And there's like, but like this is like just proof of just like how big in pop culture it was, yeah. and, right. it, and it trends into just like oh, yeah. it's just for us in the, like niche. It was like yeah. the movie because it yeah, was sure. a game changer. Right, right, right. No, absolutely. And I think like. Yeah, I think I think sometimes people forget just like how ingrained in our culture Star Wars is. Yeah. There mm-hmm. are so many people who have never seen Star Wars no. still to this day, but they know so much about it like yeah. you're saying because <laughs> it's just something that's so talked about. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of <laughs> wild like how much. I know abuelitas in Mexico who love R2D2 hmm. because his name sounds like Arturito. <laughs> And nice. they know, oh, Arturito? Oh, I love him. Like, it's ingrained in yeah. not just our culture, everybody's, everybody's culture. It was yeah. a worldwide, like, phenomenon. I don't think you could say the word lightsaber and people not at least be able to tell you it's a sword that looks like a laser. And yeah. there was a world before a lightsaber yeah. when nobody knew what the hell it was. Yeah. And then they saw it on screen. They lit the fuck up. They were just yeah. like, this yeah. is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. We yeah. need to get back to that. Yeah. We do, we do. But if it makes you feel any better, Star Wars, you're not alone. Harry Potter's having the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's So, for example, that's a franchise I've never sat down and I've never watched all oh, of them. Oh, man. Well, I guess you should say Harry Potter, just say Wizarding World. Sure. But, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah. it's not hard for any franchise. I'm yeah, like, it's, that's it's a franchise difficult. that I've never sat down to watch the whole thing in its entirety. <laughs> I've seen, I think, four out of like the 12 movies they've made yeah. and I'm like alright it's not for me it's yeah. for ki- it's for the people right, right, that right. were the right age when we were growing yeah. up and for kids now yeah. as an right. adult it's not necessarily for me but I'm not mad about that yeah, yeah exactly but, it, but, it get, but that being said it does get to be difficult with situations like this because one you know because of social media and everything sure. we're all ingrained and and we I, I'm the same way I'm like yo it's for the new generation it's yeah. for kids but the fact that you're still like really hardcore putting Luke and Leia and right. Han Solo yes, yes, and yes. Chewbacca and R2D2 right. and C3PO is like yeah. in every C3PO and R2D2 is in every, every movie one. <laughs> except for which yeah. one is there not in? There's one that's not in, right? They're no, they're in all of them. They're in, okay, every movie. <laughs> I thought there was one they skipped, but I guess no. no. no I think they're in everything. Every single one. No, they're in Rogue no, One. No, they have a cameo they're in Rogue, Rogue One. Solo, yeah. Solo. Yeah. Oh, Solo. Solo. Solo's sure, the only sure, one they're not sure. in. Yes. Oh. Which so makes like, sense. Yeah. So it's like it's Solo. Yeah. <laughs> so <Hey>. yeah. <laughs> so you know, while I do agree with that, yeah. that's why I was that's why I was saying earlier, like at a certain point, if you if you want to have that idea, mm-hmm. you got you got to make the cut. Cut ties. Agreed. You got to yeah. cut Agreed. because Agreed. because the 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 moment you still go, we still got the Skywalkers, mm-hmm. we still got this guy. Stuff, you're 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 still wanting that nostalgia element in there to try to get an audience. For so sure, right, right. You, you, you just can't have it ways. Like at yeah. some point, you just have to go. This is our new take. Yeah, and there will be little nuggets in there. Yeah. Right. But this is what we're doing with this franchise now, and that's yeah. a risk. Mm-hmm. It is, but it's, right. it's one you have to 100%. take. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see what Kevin Feige does. I think a, I think someone like Kevin Feige, be, because yeah. he's done so much with Marvel. 
I think that he will be someone, along with other filmmakers too, who will look at Star Wars and say like, what can I do with this that's never been done before? Right. And yeah, push right, the bar right. into a new direction. Yeah, Not necessarily agreed. make it like better, but I think just different. Different, yeah, different. absolutely. But I, I go, keep going hard on these shows, though. I feel like the yeah. TV yeah. shows. Are I mean, that's what Star Wars was based on. Yeah, yeah. serials, yeah. serials. So I, I think that I think it's a way that you can step, you can you focus on. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, they no, have those two. They well, do. That is <laughs> delicious. C three POs can get made, right. remade real quick. Uh, they probably still have the no, boxes from probably. the eighties. They can get Baby Yodas now. There's some collector. Oh my gosh! Baby Yoda cereal. They'll get the old Gremlin cereal and just change it to Baby Yoda cereal. Just change the print. But yeah, but like I think the tv shows and maybe that's maybe that's the thing maybe just because they haven't explored that mm-hmm. world with star yeah, wars yeah. that maybe now they're looking at something like the mandalorian and maybe even with what they're doing at obi-wan and yeah. Just yeah. Like, oh yeah. this is a way we can expand this world but right. do it a different way where it can be very contained about one very specific thing and we can have a few episodes to cover it right. so that we now know that not every star wars story has to be told in a two-hour movie right for right, sure right. So for agreed. sure agreed damn that's a that's a perfect way to end end, end this end this week's <laughs> yeah. episode. But we love all of them. We love all these. That's right. Franchises. That's right. Uh, I'm very excited to jump from this episode to Ghost Talking straight to The Mandalorian with Andre. Uh, uh-huh. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you thanks. for having me. Uh, I'm sorry I'm a chatter, but I just... No, you know, no, no. no. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I talk to a camera by myself right? all the time. So I'm like, people! <laughs> <laughs> There's other people out there? Oh, my crap. What year is it? <laughs> <laughs> what year is it? So 20, Where imagine, am I? Imagine it was like 2027. You're like, ah, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> How many DC universes are there? <laughs> And Adam just goes, let me tell yeah. you. <laughs> Let's sit down and you have a podcast you don't even about know. this. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> um, but let people know where they can find you uh, online if they're already not watching, which uh, if you haven't been. Yes, my YouTube channel is Black Nerd Comedy. Be sure to check it out. I, I geek out like just, yes. just like this, but by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also check me out on Twitch at times. I do some live streams, mm-hmm. Black Nerd Comedy, mm-hmm. uh, at Twitter and Instagram, at Black Nerd. And sometimes I'm here doing Yeah, if stuff. you That's haven't true. seen our I've Power Rangers Hyper Force RPG. Oh, yes. Andre Ranger. played the Blue I played Ranger. The Blue Ranger on that. And on top yeah. of that, he was also in the first season of Kolog. I was. Which are well. all available on this YouTube channel. Boom. So if you're interested in seeing those, go down the link, uh, go down the description, check out the links. Yeah. Follow Andre on social media. Check out all the stuff that he's doing. Uh, thank you again so much for being Thanks here. For we got to have you on sooner than later because I know I, it's taken me forever to just be like, hey, come over. Yeah. Come hang out. We'll see what the comments say. And then, uh, <laughs> nah. No, no, no. Don't worry about that. <laughs> no, no, don't no, worry no, about no, Andre, don't worry about Andre, that. Andre, you're an official hyper homie. That's now. right. That's right. You Welcome to the family. Hyper homie. Welcome to the family. I'm just adding more diversity to your <laughs> exactly. That's right. I, 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 you, keep, you keep, you know, we keep going in further. That's yeah, right. That's right. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here, guys. Thanks. Let us know down in the comments what you thought about everything that we talked about in this week's episode of Hyper Heroes. Go to our Patreon, check out our episodes for The Mandalorian, our podcast episodes for Mandalorian and Titans. Let us know what you think about both of those shows. And we will catch you guys, not next week, because we're going to be taking a Thanksgiving break. Yeah. But when we come back, Hector will be back. And uh, we're getting close to 100 episodes. So we're going to start planning some fun stuff for 100. We'll party. It'll we'll party. Yes. We'll party real Big hard. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.